Hey everybody, I'm back with Because of Winn Dixie, chapter 22. And I'm going to go ahead and read chapter 23 as well, since 22 is pretty short. We are at the point where um, Opal and Gloria Dump have started their party. And we know that they've invited all of their friends over. Or Opal's invited all of her friends over. She's invited Miss Franny and Sweetie Pie Thomas, even the Dewberry Boy, Boys, along with her father. So it's going to be interesting, and don't leave out Otis, of course. It's going to be interesting to see how everyone gets along because all of these people have had a relationship with just Opal. Opal's talked to these people individually, but they haven't all gotten together, and they don't all know each other. So let's see how this goes. Chapter 22. Otis followed me all the way back into the into the backyard where the party was. Before he could run away, I introduced him to the preacher. Daddy, I said, this is Otis. He's the one who runs Gertrude's Pets. He's the one who plays the guitar so good. How do you do, said the preacher. He stuck his hand out to Otis, and Otis stood there and shuffled his big jar of pickles back and forth, trying to free up a hand to offer back to the preacher. Finally, he ended up bending over and setting the jar down on the ground. But when he did that, his guitar slid forward and hit him in the head with a little boing sound. Sweetie Pie laughed and pointed at him like he was doing the whole thing on purpose just to amuse her. Ouch, said Otis. He stood back up and took the guitar off of his shoulder and put it down on the ground next to the jar of pickles. And then he wiped his hand on his pants and stuck it out to the preacher, who took it and said, It sure is a pleasure to shake your hand. Thank you, said Otis. I brought pickles. I noticed, said the preacher. After the preacher and Otis were done shaking hands, I introduced Otis to Miss Franny Block and to Amanda. And then I introduced him to Gloria Dump. Gloria took his hand and smiled at him, and Otis looked right in her eyes and smiled back. He smiled big. I brought pickles for your party, Otis told her, and I am so glad, she said. It just ain't a party without pickles. Otis looked down at his big jar of pickles. His face was all red. Opal, said Gloria, when are them boys getting here? I don't know, I said. I shrugged. I told him what time we were starting. What I didn't tell her was that they probably weren't coming because they were afraid to go to a party at a witch's house. Well, said Gloria, we got egg salad sandwiches. We got dump punch. We got pickles. We got dog pictures. We got litmus lozenges. And we got a preacher who can bless this party for us. Gloria Dump looked over at the preacher. He nodded his head at Gloria and cleared his throat and said, Dear God, thank you for warm summer nights and candlelight and good food, but we thank you most of all for friends. We appreciate the complicated and wonderful gifts you give us in each other, and we appreciate the task you put down before us of loving each other the best way we can, even as you love us. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen, said Gloria Dump. Amen, I whispered. Gertrude, croaked Gertrude. Are we fixing to eat now, sweetie pie asked? Shh, said Amanda. When Dixie sneezed, there was a far-off rumble of thunder. I thought at first that it was when Dixie's stomach growling. It ain't supposed to rain, said Gloria Dump. They didn't predict no rain. This dress is silk and Miss Franny Block, said Miss Franny Block. I cannot get it wet. Maybe we should go inside, said Amanda. The preacher looked up at the sky, and just then, the rain came pouring down. Okay, chapter 23. Save the sandwiches, Gloria Dump yelled to me. Save the punch. I got my dog picture, screamed Sweetie Pie. She went running around, tearing them off the trees and the chairs. Don't worry, she kept shouting. I got them. I grabbed the platter of egg salad sandwiches, and the preacher grabbed the punch, and we ran into the kitchen with them. And when I ran back outside, I saw that Amanda had hold of Miss Franny Block and was helping her into the house. Miss Franny was so teetery in her high heels that the rain would have knocked her right over if Amanda hadn't held on to her. I grabbed Gloria Dump's arm. I'm all right, she said, but she put her hand on my arm and held on to me tight. I looked around the garden before we left. All the crepe paper was melted and the candles were out, and then I saw Otis. He was standing there by his jar of pickles, looking down at his feet. Otis, I hollered at him over the rain. Come on, we're going inside. When we got in the kitchen, Amanda and Miss Franny were laughing and shaking themselves like dogs. What a downpour, said Miss Franny. Wasn't that something? That came right out of nowhere, said the preacher. Woo! 
Ooh-wee, said Gloria. Dog, squawked Gertrude. I looked at her. She was sitting on the kitchen table. The thunder was really booming and cracking. Oh, no, I said. I looked around the kitchen. Don't worry, said Sweetie Pie. I saved them dog pictures. I got them right here. She waved her around her water magazine pages. Where's Winn-Dixie? I shouted. I forgot about him. I was just thinking about the party, and I forgot about Winn-Dixie. I forgot about protecting him from the thunder. Now, Opal, the preacher said, he's probably right out in the yard, hiding underneath a chair. Come on, you and I will go look. Hold on, said Gloria Dump. Let me get you a flashlight and some umbrellas. But I didn't want to wait. I went running out into the yard. I looked under all the chairs and around all the bushes and trees. I called his name real loud. I felt like crying. It was my fault. I was supposed to hold on to him, and I forgot. Opal, I heard the preacher call. I looked up. He was standing on the porch with Gloria, and Dunlap and Stevie Dewberry were standing there, too. Your guests are here, the preacher said. I don't care, I hollered. Come on up here, Gloria Dump said, her voice all hard and serious. She shone her flashlight out at me. I walked up onto the porch, and she handed me the flashlight. Tell these boys, hey, she said. Tell them that you are glad they came and that you will be right back just as soon as you find your dog. Hey, I said, thank you for coming. I just got to find one Dixie, and then I'll be right back. Stevie stared at me with his mouth wide open. You want me to help, Dunlap asked. I shook my head. I tried not to cry. Come here, child, Gloria Dump said. She reached for me and pulled me close to her and whispered in my ear, there ain't no way you can hold on to something that wants to go. You understand? You can only love what you got while you got it. She squeezed me hard. Good luck now, she called as me and the preacher stepped off the porch and ran out into the rain. Good luck, Miss Franny called from the kitchen. That dog ain't lost. I heard Sweetie Pie holler to somebody inside. That dog's too smart to get lost. What do you guys think? I'm starting to get a little bit worried about Win Dixie. That sounds like some really good advice that Gloria Dump gave, too. There ain't no way you can hold on to something that wants to go. You understand? You can only love what you got while you got it. Y'all hang on to those words. I turned around and looked back, and the last thing I saw was the porch light shining on Dunlap Dewberry's bald head. It made me sad, him standing on Gloria's porch, his bald head glowing. Dunlap saw me looking, and he raised up his hand and waved to me. I didn't wave back. Hmm. Are you a little bit shocked by that? I am too, but I guess... Opal's just upset because when Dixie is lost and she's kind of taking it out on them and not being very friendly right now. All right, guys, next video will be chapter 24. Tune in.